Hi guys! So you know I love 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 fashion. So I thought I'm starting a new series called Fashion Story where I discuss all things fashion. We're starting with something really close to home, the Parsi Gara. And who better to talk about this than Ashley? My name is Ashtin and I'm super excited to be talking about Parsi Gara. I've been researching on Garas for the last 15 years. There are so many legends about it, there are so many stories, but nobody's actually written in detail about the history and how it came about to India and why such a small community was patronizing this very particular craft. So that got me really excited and I started my label eight years ago in 2012. So Ashtin, I'm super excited to have Same you here today and um, you know your designs are the most beautiful things created, uh, they're just stunning. But a lot of my viewers, I feel like constantly ask me questions about the Gara and I feel like I can't do justice to answer them because I don't really know a lot of information. So can you tell us a brief history about the Gara, how it came sure. about? Sure. So basically, uh, it all begins with tea. Mm -hmm. So there was this obsession for tea. Which and we still have as yeah, Parsis. Parsis <laughs> and, and also the British had an obsession and all yeah. of Europe had this newfound obsession and the only place to get good tea was China. Okay. And that's when people started trading with mainland China. Mm -hmm. So from India, the British and the Parsis started trading with opium in China. They saw these beautiful textiles being created for the European market. And these were these elaborate embroideries of fauna and flora. Yeah. Very, very exquisitely done, beautiful shading, beautiful coloring, and very realistic. So they found the idea was why not do it on a sari. The Chinese craftsmen didn't know what a, a sari was, was. <laughs> and they, they had no idea. So they created more of a beautiful tapestry yeah, you know, with yeah, flowing yeah. birds and flying birds and rivers and pagodas and yeah. nature. So obviously it was really interesting, but slowly and uh, it kind of evolved to customize around the yeah. sari. And once the Parsi women also started yeah. traveling, and when they went to China, I think the Chinese workers could see, yeah. embroiderers could see how, how it was worn yeah. and how it moved around the body, yeah, etc. Yeah. And then designs were slowly customized. So this craft kind of evolved and it, there was a lot of contribution from the Parsis who were wearing it also. Right. So, and the women were interacting with craftspeople, designing new motifs, new, designing new borders. And that's how the craft kind of slowly came about. And they started sending it to India. And it became a bit of a craze. And people like a Parsi thing. thing. Like, yeah. honestly, for those of you who don't know, like, garas are like heirlooms. Like, if you yeah. have one in the family, family you, you pass it, it on to your children. Yeah. Or your, like, if you have sons, you give it to their wife. It just goes, goes on and on. on. Like, yeah. uh, that's the whole, like, it's like a piece of jewelry. When I wear a gara, everybody's like, oh my God, like, yeah, you're wearing a gara. It's, it's like, and it's, it's a feeling. And, this feeling, and I yeah. think it's shaped and gave an identity to the community yeah. and suddenly the community was prospering. This craft is a beautiful amalgamation of uh, Chinese, yeah. Indian, uh, a little bit of European motifs and above all Persian motifs. Yeah. And as Zoroastrians, we love nature and there is a lot of reverence for nature. True. There's so lots of floral designs. So what are the different designs that you would say the popular Gala so, designs? So the most popular, we had like quite a few quaint yeah. names. So the one popular one is China Chini. China Chini. Which means China man, Chinese women. Okay. And these were the full heavy saris right. which showed a landscape. So it was a way of depicting the culture Chinese and culture their life on, on the yeah. sari. So that was one of the most popular ones, China Chini. Then we have what is uh, we call Marga Marbi, the, like the a rooster, rooster family. Yeah, yeah. Then we have Karolia, which is like a spider. Okay. So it's like a round like the web, web, yeah, web yeah. thing. And then we have Panda Papeta. Which Panda is Papeta, for those of you who don't know, is papeto, potatoes onions and, and onions. Onions. We call them Kanda Papeta. Why is it called Kanda Papeta? So polka dots. Huh. Basically, it's a polka dot design. And polka dots are so common. I think so. They just said it's like Kanda Papeta. Kanda, Kanda Papeta. <laughs> so these kind of you know designs kind yeah. of came about. And then all sorts of floral designs. Oh, like lots that's of like floral. Multiple so, I've seen also, and there's a crane also. So there's lots of cranes. There are lots of birds, butterflies. You know. Yeah. In Chinese culture, they signify eighty years. Okay. So, so when a person was, wearing yeah. it, it meant that it was for long yeah. life, for longevity. So to have a crane 
was about being a senior ranking officer and the whole idea of cranes were like they were these big birds which could fly yeah. and the Chinese had this thing about being able to kind of fly and humans that yeah. nobody had flown or something yeah. so that was the kind of idea behind these texts. We don't have any dragons right. because the dragon was only reserved for the emperor. Oh, you know, oh, so yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Why, why is it? I don't know that. Yeah. It all has meaning and it all, all has a cultural reference. And how do you think going forward, um, you know, we can take this track forward? Because I, it, it saddens me to see that the younger generation is not as into uh, Gara's obviously because it's a sari at the end of the day and you don't wear it every day. And even though you have it as an heirloom, it kind of becomes that thing that stays in your cover Precious, and you wear it yeah. once. You yeah. know, like in few years or whatever. Yeah. We've been working with this craft and trying to take it forward in form of smaller items. So we do a lot of accessories like bags, so, shoes, you know, yeah. shoes, etc. So that it can be carried on a daily basis. Daily or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you can pair it up with a lot yeah. of things. We also do a lot of uh, customized apparel. So we do the elaborate jackets yeah. and all. And we want to do more stuff which is younger, which is fresher, can be easily paired with yeah. other things in your wardrobe and you can, a, a small jacket or a small yeah. waistcoat which you can throw with other things from your wardrobe. Yeah. So it's not so elaborate and it's not so expensive yeah. because the craft is all done by hand so yeah. it takes a lot of time and it is tedious. Also the next thing I want to ask you is how do you buy a gara? Now so many people ask me this and I'm just like, Come to I, yeah, I'm like, um, I sent them your link saying, yeah. ask me. But like, how do you know what work is like the right work or so, how expensive it should be? What's so, machine? I've heard there's machine made and handmade. So yeah, you do get a lot. Uh, there is a lot of machine made uh, pieces and that we, we do handmade pieces. Yeah. So there is obviously with the handmade, there is a cost factor right. because it is extremely, Tedious. you can see from the work, the quality, check the back. Of right. the yeah, I'm sure my says the back, back should be as neat as the front, then you know you're yeah. at least so, with the right person. So, so, so there is a saying in Gujarati, Agal Hira Pachal Hira, like which means yeah, that that diamonds is, in front and worms at the back. Yeah. So then you that, that is, that, then you then know you that know that's not the gara you want. And also, I guess price wise, right? So, how can you, can you tell the difference between machine and machine? I but like for normal people, is there normal any people, difference? I think uh, you can see from the back, right. like where the thread has moved very consistently. Right. And also the thing is, many people confuse that machine work is gen generally more perfect, yeah. which is not, not true. true. But uh, if you're actually looking for a traditional Parsi gara, yeah. you want the handmade yeah. one, and also. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got the right designs. Also, there's a whole look on how you drape a Parasi Gala. Okay, so Afton is also going to show me yes. how Perfect. to drape it in a few ways. Yeah. So, should we do that? Perfect. Let's Time go. to get Garo side. Yes. We start with tucking. Just make sure the height is right. You have your feet covered. So I generally take the first pleat a little bigger mm -hmm. than the other one so that it's yeah, it kind of sits better. My uh, mom insists that you need to first take the pallu on top mm -hmm. and see the length etc. But uh, because we do our sarees like measure, it kind of gets easier. Yeah. So now you just Stop. take the pleat, make sure it moves. Here you need to do the pleats. You can do these pleats according to the border mm -hmm. and, and place much, the border yeah. accordingly. Just give it a little shake. Hold the pleats here and place it on the shoulder. Just take this and fold a little here. Take two pleats here. You just start this in. This is your traditional Parsi gara. With the pointed pallu, yeah. the front long pallu, pleats on the shoulder. And this will show the work the work. most, yes. which is why a lot of people yes. say, why don't you wear it that way? You can, you can but, but this shows, shows your work because it like, just beautiful. looks beautiful. And pair it with pearls. Pearls always. Yes. You're perfect. Set to go. 
And what about uh, what? How else could we rate it? Like the normal yeah, way. Yeah, so I'll show you. But I've never felt so elegant. <laughs> <laughs> Parsi fashion. Come on. <laughs> And I'm sitting back and I'm still hoping Lord got my eyes really open where I'm still Get into the bat with chit chat Got my hat back and I backtrack My awareness taught me three things You gotta be original Drunk night, sibling with no movement Be pivotal Never really cry for pain Main so I Stunt like baby and I work like Wayne Now let's pursue the children of the game Yeah, bounce We bounce to this Searching for the lifestyle Ignorant bliss We rock stars with a brainless bitch If you wanna party then let's go Got the bed I know, I know Man, these hoes the bull in the conversation with I just want all of y'all on my God damn dick, this could be some week, but it's his beat that's making it amazing. So guys, this was everything about the Farsi guy. I hope you answered all your questions. If you have any more, leave them in the comments and ask me and I will try and answer them for you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. And Have a guys, great time. Like the video, give it thumbs up, and we will see you guys soon. Bye.